crazy son of a bitch, you did. Hey, what's up, everybody? Today we're going to be playing some Vamana in the Soul Lane, a play-by-play -play as usual. Um, but this time I'm going to be playing the entire game with a shoe on my head, okay? There's no... There's no catch here. There's nothing crazy about this gameplay other than, one, I'm going to be telling you everything I do, like a play-by-play, -play, teaching you how to play Vamana in the solo lane to the best of my ability. I'm going to try and carry and do work with him playing the little Mana skin, and the whole entire time there will be a shoe on my head. So I have to remain relatively static here, relatively motionless, considering I have the shoe on my head, and it, it's not, like, duct-taped or, like, glued on or anything like, anything like that. So, um, yeah. I just simply have it on my head, so hopefully it stays there for the entire game. I'm going to try and hard carry this uh, this game, this conquest game, with the with the boys and girls, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, Vamana recently got buffed. He's part of the reason I wanted to play Vamana today as one. I haven't, you know, uploaded a ton of Vamana lately, and two, Vamana got buffed pretty recently. His ult got basically what Atalanta's has on the passive. Uh, Atalanta's passive. You know, where you are strafing to the side or strafing back. Um, since whenever you're walking backwards or to the side in Smite, your movement speed is a little bit less than it normally is when you're walking forward. They've made it so Vamon ult is um, not as slow when you do stuff like that. So uh, I'd actually say Vamon is pretty good right now, especially if you go the Blink Thorns route, which I am obviously going to do this game. You go multi pots on him because he actually uses some mana early on. You don't have to, but. Um, this guy says, just told my friend, whip out the final case special of Ryzen Silo, and look who it is. Oh, uh, well. I... Hopefully, he destroys me. I say hopefully he destroys me because maybe he would have learned something from my, my patented Ryzen Solo gameplay. So, whenever I have to look over here, I have to be a little bit careful to not... <laughs> scuff my shoe on my head if you notice it's not like a tennis shoe or like a sneaker or anything it's it's a slide it's like a sliders or flip-flops or whatever you want to call them wherever you whatever you call them where you live los zapatos gonna be starting blue of course the meta right now is changing a little bit i don't know if you guys have noticed been watching spl or watching my streams or anything like that tp is falling off a little bit because blink thorns are just so potent uh, in the mid to late game, it really helps you be um, useful as a solo laner in the mid to late game. Not that you weren't before, it's just, you know, very, very powerful. powerful. I was going to say potent, but then I said powerful, so I kind of combined them. And another thing you do is, if you do buy Blink, you should use it to get it on cooldown, because you're not going to be using it in lane. Besides maybe to get a kill play here and there. I just wanted to hit him for my Warrior's proc. I need to see what his build is, because that could change some stuff. So he has Mage's Blessing, interesting. It's not really good for him to poke me like that when there's minions in front of him when he has Mage's Blessing because he'll just take so much damage from them. You know, because Mage's Blessing obviously doesn't give you any tankiness, any health or anything like that. We're going to go on him a little bit here. Get a Warrior's uh, proc again. I don't need my 3 for Totem because I have so much pressure I'll just be able to auto it. So I used my 3 on him there and I was actually able to hit him so that's good. I saved my Vision Shard a little bit so we'll go ahead and place that a little bit high so we can play really aggro without having... A jungler gank. Or anybody gank for that matter. I'm gonna hit him to group up the wave here. Bring the minions in. Doesn't really matter if he pokes me. I have enough pots to sustain it up. And uh, since he's kind of playing back, he'll just lose uh, wave pressure here. I'm about to hit level 3 and I want to go on him a little bit with it. I could have um, put a second point in my 3, but I got my dash because your dash actually does some decent damage. 70 and it's also a nice auto cancel and I was gonna maybe go for a kill play there, but he kind of just played back. We forced a lot of his pots already, and we don't really need the extra point in our three for clear because we're probably going to out clear and not trade this guy either way. Especially if he put a point in his dash. I might be getting ganked here. It's kind of hard to tell. Let's see if I can hit him plus the wave here. Value. A little double tap, baby. Thor gameplay and Vamana gameplay coming in clutch. I've played a lot of Vamana and Thor in my day. But yeah, Vamana is one of those gods that I think like... You can play him in a lot of different ways. I think the correct way to play him is how I'm going to play him, and I'll show you, and you've probably seen in some of my gameplays. Basically, you just... I call it getting loose. I've talked about it plenty of times. Although, I do have a Disco passive, so I can probably bully this guy pretty hard throughout the laning phase. I'm going to dash through this and then through it as I go to my blue. Um, 
I call it getting loose, and it's basically just whenever you have, like, Vamana's not the greatest in lane, especially against bullies and stuff. Against Ryzen, I'll do fine, but... Um, basically, it's just when you start proxying, you start pushing really, really hard and rotating out of the lane, making these little mini rotations. Sometimes they're going to rotate all the way. Sometimes you're not going to rotate at all. Sometimes you're just going to, you know, rotate a little bit and then go back to your lane and proxy again. And you're basically just a hyper farmer. That's what's so good about Pomana. And he's very hard to gank and stuff, so you're very hard to punish for your, your proxies and everything like that. You know? Um, because if anybody ever ganks you, you know, you have your dash, and if you go cooldown, you're going to... Have that up pretty often. You have your ult, which it's very, very hard to kill Vamana early game in his ult if you don't have anti-heal and you don't have a lot of people hitting him at the same time. So if it's just their jungler that comes over when you're like proxying or when you're just even in your lane, your ult will always, almost always save you unless it's a very specific counter matchup like Sir Ket maybe. Um, so I would just recommend not picking Vamana too much into Sir Ket if you're playing ranked. So this guy did go TP, which is really good for me. I should be able to pressure him out pretty hard because he won't have a defensive active. I'm gonna try and interrupt his clear here and then go on him. I have attack speed boots now. Oh, that was a bad de decision, buddy. Ooh, that slow potency kind of saved him. I can maybe kill him here though with my blink. I'm gonna pretend to go to totem. His dash should still be down. Nice, we got him. His dash was still down, so he's dead either way, but I could have also ulted his uh, ult and for CC immunity and would have just killed him. A little bit bad for him to play up like that when his dash is down, and he knows, you know, you should know I have blink. So this is an example of getting loose. I mean, he's dead, so it's not really exactly getting loose, but I have a disco passive, so it doesn't matter either way. And a lot of times when you when you make this play and the jungler comes here, obviously since I play at a pretty high level, like my teammates will play around it really well, and if like I come and get ganked and I live for a while, they'll be able, they'll be able to play the mop the map off of that the mop. They'll be able to play the the map off of that, but even at your own level, it's still really good for you to force people to come over and just survive. You know, it can open up things that you may not realize in the moment. They are able to get a kill on a Wilkes there. I was going to maybe rotate, but unfortunately she died. People, a lot of, actually, whenever I talk about Disco Passive, people always ask me, what the heck is a Disco Passive? They're like, what is this, the 80s? But Disco Passive means Discordia Passive, and it means that you're getting extra power. I think Reacting might be on speed. No, she didn't actually go for it. I wanted to defend it anyway. I want my wave. Um, it's Discordia Passive, and basically you just get extra power since you're top damage. Whoever has the most player damage in the game, right here, top damage just means player damage, um, gets a extra power. <laughs> Loyal. Loyal knows what I'm doing. Um, uh, yeah, so you just get extra power, which is really good in lane because, you know, you have power that the other soul laner wouldn't have. So it's basically like having a global ult or global ability and global passive to affect your lane when nobody has to be there. It's very, very good, especially in those volatile matchups that are like 50-50, you know, I talk about, where it's very skill dependent on who... Uh, Aw, oh, you freaking meanie. That should be a kill. Unless he gets out of his ult and jumps away. There it is. Smart by him to do that. You can t notice that I'm a little bit faster when I backpedal and stuff like that because of the buff. <laughs> I'm backing. Um, we're going to go actually into Talisman of Energy. That's my kind of my favorite item on Vamana for magical defense. You can go a lot of different stuff. You could, I could have gone Shogun's into like a Frostbound, and that would have been good this game. Um, I could have also gone just like straight up like Genji's and go the CDR route. But like I said, Vamana can be played in a lot of different ways, and uh, you know I, I think all of them can work. Shogun's into Frostbound would have been definitely good this game. They have two auto attackers, but I can also just go Talisman of Energy into Frostbound. Mana's actually pretty nice with like a hybrid build. He's kind of like Ama where you, um, you, CDR is nice on him, but you don't want to just invest in a complete CDR like Breastplate into like, you know, Breastplate uh, Genji's and then, you know, just be full CDR with like a Mantle Lake game or whatever. Ooh, double tap. He walked in the way for me. Um, so it's nice to have like the CDR options on him, but at the end of the day, you can also go auto attack on him, especially if you're trying to hyper carry late game. I'm going to ward there just to see if they come in to go for blue. It's very easy to clear the wave on Vamana. You just put points into your three, you get it maxed out, and then it'll just full clear. And that's when you start getting loose because you can just full clear the wave with one ability. And then what you do is like, so you walk up to the front minion, you auto it three, auto it again, two, if it's up, and then auto the brute minion down, and boom, the wave is cleared. This, Vamana, this Arachne's looking for a gank over here, but he's not gonna ever kill me. I could, I'm just gonna waste his time. I know he's gonna gank, so I'm just gonna be annoying. We'll back here, as long as Regen lets us back. 
and get our talisman of energy and we'll run back we already have a ward so we can place that high if we need to so this gives us 300 health and i just love the passive on it that's why i love the item of amana it gives you mp5 movement speed attack speed everything that amana wants because he is a very mana hungry god not not as bad as he once was he used to be even worse but they buffed his mana cost a good bit of time ago so now that we have our first item, this is where it gets real loosey-goosey, okay? We got our three max, we got some points in our two. I can start just like dashing through tower and going for uh, proxies and you can interrupt his three pretty easily like that. This blue's about to be up, so we're gonna go for that. He likes to go for a poke, three to the front minions and boom, it's dead. Now we're gonna get blue and we're gonna proxy the next wave and then maybe look to rotate. He's just gonna be sitting in our tower. He does have tier two breastplates, so be a little bit hard to kill. I'm not going to 3 this because I can just 2 it with the Nene. That's his ult down. Popped a pot because I thought he might hit me with it, but we're just going to clear wave. Ryzen's backing under his tower. I can rotate now. I have blink up, and that's this is the power of what a proxy does. Look how much time I have to just basically roam around the map and look for a gank in mid. I can go all the way to do it, but I really wanted to because I have bought so much time. Could blink and try and dive this guy, but everybody's got to be on the same page here. Plus, they have Kepri ult, so we probably won't. I'll just go... Uh, Push this and then go for their proxy again. Oh, dang it. You don't want to get that to one HP so that your dash kills it so I can dash all the way to the next wave, but I can catch this wave either way because I'm such a good surfer. So usually I like to go into... I like Talisman and Breastplate. Those are the core items of a mod. You can kind of go for whatever you want from there, but I think I might just go Frostbound so I can play really aggro here. I'm going to poke this guy out. Only reason I'm not like rotating after the proxy is that my blue buff is up and I don't want to let him have it for free because if you hyper farm, get both blue buffs enough that you'll be really far ahead and that's when you can really make the hyper carry rotations later on as a slow laner. Mana's 2 is really good for securing blue. I'm already level 12. The only person who's kind of close is, Vimana, er, is Apollo. He's going to get that cleanup kill. I might get the tower for it, but can't really stop the rotation there. On my way. On my way. On my way. Oh, they didn't get it. Ryzen ult is down, so I guess it makes sense. They're coming under? No, we're good. Try and get stop this uh, Ryzen from going to his tower. Nice, we stopped him. The back camps are up again. I'm going to proxy again. This is that getting loose. This is that getting loose, getting that hyper farm going. Somehow I'm still top damage with this go buff. I haven't really been fighting this Ryzen, Ryzen at all. So I'm going to get these into their blue buff. It's not even that this Arachne... Like, it's not even that this Arachne is a bad player. It's just really hard to, like gain control of your jungle once again once there's a Vamana who's really far ahead and is just like proxying everything. She doesn't want to gank me. She'll never kill me. It's just a waste of time. So they're going to their back. Oh, unfortunate. They're going to their backs to see that they're down. This guy just dashed in here, but I see them on the ward. That's why warding is good. They don't do any damage to me. It's a Kepri, Agni, and Ryzen who are all magical and I have a very tanky magical defense item. I might just get this tower here. I can interrupt his clear with my one. Interrupt his one. He may be maxing his two. That's what I would do if I was him, but... Oh! Why didn't he ult it? I'm just gonna ult so I can take this tower forever. We'll kill him and get the tower. Call careful left because we made a play in right. We'll two this back away in three. Alright. Now we can get our second item. We'll go Frostbound because we can afford it. And we'll go Thorns for a second Relic. Like I said at the beginning of the game, that's kind of just the meta right now in solo, but it's also the meta even in support. You'll see a lot of supports right now just building Blink Thorns and playing super aggro, like diving characters. So now we're going to be really far ahead of this Ryzen. We're up 1,400, 1,500 gold. He's actually not as behind because he's gotten a few totems to help out his team. We'll figure, full clear of that. I like to put points in my ult after my 3 and my 2 max. Some people like to put points in the 1 because you actually... Use it for damage a lot of time, even for clearing or just for um, 1v1ing or whatever, but I think having some extra points in your ult is nice. So even though I have the tower killed, that doesn't mean I should just start immediately rotating. You want to get these waves pushed up as well, keep them uh, pushed into their tower. I don't want them to proc that if I can avoid it. Nice, we avoided it. So now I can just dash into the jungle, four levels up on their jungler, who'll never want to gank me. Get a ward on their back camps, I can rotate mid here. I can maybe get a blink auto 2 on Agni, he's just dead. I wanted to make sure I got the auto off first, so that my 2 actually killed, because I didn't want the Kepri to get his uh, revive on me. I could probably kill this guy as well, my 2's coming back up soon. I'm going to ult this so the Agni doesn't get a stun on me, he's dead. 
Look at this Talisman of Energy plus Vanilla Vana passive. Talisman of Energy plus Frostbound, baby. There is a Medusa here, but uh, she's never going to kill me. This is getting loose, boys. Rotate mid, get some cleanup kills. This is how it's done. So I'll get these really low, and then I'll dash through them all with my one. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I didn't think that they were going to die to that auto attack. Discordia passive is such a surprise sometimes. You get so used to play a certain way with a certain amount of power with a certain build, and then it's just, it just changes instantly with one character, and it's, it is a little bit crazy how much, like, how much it can do. Because it's basically giving me, like, 20 power right now, I think. I'll just do ta uh, totem real quick. We got gold during all that as well, so they get by the team. Top everything but mana, baby. Can we get a like for that? This is how you get loose with the boy, with the little baby. We have an Arachne coming. Be a little bit careful just because we don't have our ult. I don't think she'll ever kill me. I could have maybe 1v1'd and uh, just popped my thorns there, but I think that they would end have ended up killing me, to be honest. Despite how far ahead I am, they just would have kept me locked down for so long. I could have maybe baited and like always just dashed out and gotten away. But if Rackney hit me with her three, she could always chase me out because the webs would follow me forever. Level 17, we're going to keep the hyper farm going, dashing to our farm. We're going to two this, then our three is going to come back up, we're going to three it, and then we're just going to back. And we'll be chilling. He's poking me, but it's not a big deal. It does make me right quite back. slow, though. Bye. I think we're going to go Berserkers and go more auto attack this time around, but I could go Breastplate there, and it would feel just as good because it gives you a lot of physical protections. It gives you a 20% CDR, which is always nice, even if you're trying to go auto attack. Like I said, Hybrid's really nice on him. Um, it also gives you Mana and MP5, which Vamana likes, so I'm just really driving the point home that you can build Vamana a lot of different ways, and it'll feel good with pretty much everything. But this time we're going to go, since Vamana just got his uh, passive buffed, we're going to go the auto attack route. We're going to go Berserkers into probably Stone Cutting and just see how hard we hit. See if we can just one-shot some people and hyper carry. Enemy you do not need Hasten to Vamana. It's like a misconception that Vamana like, needs Hasten. But if you just go like one movement speed item and then have your ult for chasing people down, and even Frostbound's good for sticking to people, you'll literally just follow people forever. You're so fast and you see immune and everything and... Tossman of energy obviously obviously gives me movement speed, so I'm gonna do so much work here. Maybe I should have kept diving there. I'm gonna wait till until I need to. That's her Aegis. I might die here. She's using my healing to my advantage. She did jump on me, extend my ult a little bit more. Yeah, we're good. I think maybe I didn't play that perfectly. I could have stayed on their back line the whole time. Kepri got a nice revive off. Oh, I don't know about dashing in, buddy. Or maybe he should have. Oh, I'm dead. Curses. I was saying I don't know if he should dash in, but I didn't think the Agni would have bomb stone up. I thought his bombs would be down. But then he bombs on me, and that was what caught me. I could have dashed maybe, but I knew that uh, if he did have the bombs, then it would just interrupt it, so I was going to wait. But unfortunate. Um, yeah, we'll go stone cutting next. I did take a decent amount of damage there, but I don't know really what it was from. It was from Medusa. Oh, she already has kin size. That makes sense. 650 for tier 2 stone cutting. I did die, and that was a pretty big uh, shutdown for them because I was 6 0. I need to start, uh, that was just kind of a bad fight in general. They kind of started poorly, and I was going to maybe come in and pop off, but I think maybe I just played it a little bit bad by not, um, going on their backline the whole time. I went to the Arachne, I think just ulted out. I'm just going to rotate to gold here, make sure we get it, because it's an Oni Fury, which is a very, very important in the mid game. Enemies in the right jungle. Okay, no problem. Fury. They're gonna do pyro, it's fine. They may try and go fire. So I kind of have to hover. No, there's no way they're yeah, there's no way they're on fire now. Which 
just gonna annoy this guy. Then hit him with the second part of the double tap. I'm gonna ward over here to see where he is. We got the Oni Fury, so we can chill if we need to. Pop a pot. He's just gonna get kept real too. That's both his actives though. I did blink on him just because I thought maybe we looked and I can one-shot him. Kuzumo kinda into there. Oh, no, she didn't get beats. Oh, that's unfortunate. Nope, I didn't get my ult off either. They kind of just got a lucky CC chain there. Uh, it's kind of bad of us, but it was, it was really mainly just bad of Kuzumbo to int like that. I kind of got CC chain, so it was kind of unfortunate. If I was able to get my thorns and ult off, they wouldn't have ever killed me, but... Apollo did get a tier 2, so that's good. They also have to worry about any waves in right and left right now, so... We're up in 20. That's the only problem with getting really far ahead is that you die, or when you die, you're dead for a while. Kind of two just really unfortunate fights. Last two times around for me. So now my lead is not so good. But I still have the shoe on my head, so that's what matters. There's a big wave in right. Should be good on that. I'm going to go ahead and sell this just because stone cutting is a pretty big power spike for me. This Medusa's hit me real hard. She has three items, she's, she's hit me that hard. ADCs are broken. <laughs> uh, just kidding. No, but for real, they are. Your left tower is under attack. Kind of a bad thing that I've done this game is even though I've like trying to been rotating, it's uh, been a little bit unfortunate how the fights have gone. The unfortunate, or not the unfortunate part, the bad part is that I haven't really been pushing my waves. I kind of stopped, I started ignoring my waves, which is not good on a character like this. You still want to be really aggro, really pushing the waves and making sure that your farm's staying up. This guy want a 1v1? Let's do it. Am I getting irritated on? He's one HP. I am very low, but I didn't hit the rack with that. There's two people here. I'm just gonna try one v two for as long as possible. I'm quite fast. Oh, that's too bad. I was gonna blink on him. Gonna dash away here. Wasn't able to get him with the 1v2, but we forced Rackney out, and I... Th did we win a fight somewhere else? Did we kill somebody while that was happening? I'm not really sure. Alright, we're gonna try and go into a mantle. Uh, Spirit Robe, not very good on a mana, because you want to have items that are gonna be really powerful for when you're in your ult. And mantle's pretty good, because it'll... If you do get low, or happen to get CC chained before your, you can get your ults off, it'll help you... Uh, it'll help you try and get it off. Spirit Robe, obviously, if you don't get CC'd, it's not very valuable, and you're not going to get cc when you're ult in your ult because you're CC immune. <laughs> so, characters like Vamana, Cthulhu, and, you know, characters that really want to be really powerful in their long CC immunities, you don't really want to build Spirit Robe on. You can build Magis on him, though, so that you can get your ult off in these situations. I was missing my autos there. I'll just back for tier 2 mantle. Be right back. I should, I've had these wards all game. I haven't placed them. I do that a lot when I'm playing casuals. I'll grab a sentry though. Since fire giant is going to be the next contested objective. And we need to have some sentry wards, some D wards for it. Don't have thorns for 20. Oh, this guy can't get picked. He's a Kuzumbo. How do you get picked? How do you get picked? Be careful. Well, we're going to have to 4v5 here for a bit. They actually have a lot of good CC for me. They can interrupt my dash pretty easily. No, be careful, Apollo. Apollo kind of ended. Oh, he dashed in. We can probably attack. I'm gonna do a lot of damage to Agni because I can just sit in his dash with my thorns. Although they're just kind of waiting for me. There's three people on me. 
I was able to trade with the Medusa with three people on me, which is pretty good, but looks like we weren't able to do anything off of it. Um, they do all, all have escapes, which is a little bit unfortunate because then I can't keep my Frostbound passive on them, but... Yeah, that wasn't a good start to a fight. She altered the Kepri. Not gonna be good, but they need to make sure that we can fire it. Kizabo just keeps getting picked before we even can fight, so... As long as he's up and we just have a 5v5, we should be good. I think I feel like every fight so far has just been a 4v5. I say defend fire just to make sure they're not on it. They don't have Medusa, so it would be really hard for them, but doesn't matter what my build is, even though I'm kind of more bruiser, more damaging than I am tank, if I was diving three people and they were all hitting me, I'm gonna I'm gonna eventually die to them, you know. So the fact that I was able to kill Medusa there kinda is because I have more damaging abilities or way. damaging build. Ooh, my fault. Sorry. No, no problem. I just want the blue. No I just wanted to have the blue. Need to wait for my actors to be up to be really powerful. Be careful. Gonna push this wave. They might look for me. Need to get this D ward out. Oh, ward right there. It's good to have vision right there. I'm gonna go push another wave. They may try and come to me, but I don't really care. So I think I can back in time. I'm gonna grab another sentry. And be on my way. I still have my blink up, so I kinda wanna wait for that. They need to make sure that they're not on fire. They're not, because Medusa's not there. Well, they could be, but they wouldn't be doing a lot of damage to it, I don't think. So they have three carries, basically, because Ryzen's is gonna be sticking with them. And they have a Kepriol for it as well. I could farm up to Mantle before this fight. It would be really good. That extra defense would be really nice. They see me, they're all gonna come over here. As I said, they see me, so they're all gonna come over here. There's right Paul back. here. I have my mantle now. They did see me back, so. It's just regular gold fear. We don't need to worry about that. We could pull fire right now. This should be fine for us. They haven't even crossed over to fire yet. Just commit to it. I'm gonna own this Medusa really hard. That's Kepriol. That's her beads. She's trying to kill herself to me. Oh, she was able to get it off. It doesn't matter though. It should be kills. Agni extending my ult perfectly. Oops. See if I can hit Agni here. Oh, I wasn't able to hit him, unfortunately. But that's his dash down, so he should just be dead. Able to get him, gotta wait. Nice, we're all playing there. Sorry, I was trying to focus. Where did Ryzen go? I think he was one HP, so he would have backed. Oh, there he is. He missed. He might have just saved me there. He gave up his life for mine, which is nice. But it's also just the correct play. <laughs> oh, maybe he's out? Well, we got fire, but all of us died besides me and Kuzumbo. But now we can upgrade this. We can go ahead and upgrade this. And I would say it is worth it to upgrade Blink. It's pretty nice to have the lower cooldown and the, a little bit of mitigation that you get from having it. They did get Gold Fairy, all things considered. I have 300 power with this Fire Giant 500 pot and Discordia passive. I actually do so much damage. I can maybe take red and I would... Oh my goodness, imagine the damage output. I guess we're gonna see, we don't have to imagine. And I'm still pretty tanky to be honest, almost 3k health. When I get my stone cutting uh, proc'd, I have almost 200 physical proc. He missed his dash. Does he have Nemean? He has Nemean. Absorbed into my... Unfortunate. I'll be slowed there. Attack. 
get a ton of damage off here. I am 1 HP, so I gotta be a little bit careful. That's their sprint. That's Agni Aegis. I'm not healing at all because she has Toxic Blade and Agni has Divine. Uh, I can heal with Fire Giant in my Chalice here, and then we can maybe gank. Yeah, be a little bit careful because he has Magi's. Were they not there? Did they not play up on this wave? Well, I don't have my Thorns for 75 and I don't have ult for 40, so we can't really exactly go for this. Kind of have to do a lot of work in these fights, I think, in order to win them, so... Again, we don't have fire, but two of us have it, and Frontliner's having fire is pretty nice. This guy needs to just stop playing so far up. He just got his ult for us for no reason. And now he's dead. Okay. And then it, it baits the whole team into it, and then we all die for it. Medusa did dash. Just good didn't hit the ult, though, so... I'm gonna try and go push left to make them... Well, I have to decide to defend the split push. Plus, if anybody comes, I should be able to 1v1 them. I still have fire for 20, so if I can get this wave under tap under the Phoenix, I can easily one-shot it with my build. They may try and end, actually, so... I think my team can uh, stall for a little bit. Arachne's here, so... I'm gonna get some good poke on her. I'm actually gonna try and back now, because I think they're gonna try and end. If she comes to me, I can probably kill her. That's her ult. I don't have wave for a while, so... That's her beads. I'm gonna try and cancel in two. Nice, we got it off. Oh, their Kepri's coming, so I can slow him maybe. I think I hit him, so... I should be good unless they're cutting me off. If they ran all the way up the map to come cut me off, then I am dead. Oh, there's Agni. Bye-bye. That's unfortunate because I didn't get the Phoenix. I only killed Arachne. It is what it is, though. If I committed from the get-go to getting the Phoenix, I think I would have gotten it. But I was afraid that they were going to try and end. So, last item. What should we get? I wonder. Hmm. An Oboe wouldn't be that bad. I think I have enough power to justify it. And it's relatively cheap. It gives me some crazy attack speed. I could also just go another tank item, but I think I want to keep some of my attack speed here. My this Willix is kind of getting owned. She's going to jump in. Is he going to jump in? <gasps> he did jump in. Oh, what a blink. Oh, I probably should be able to get a kill here. Nice. I can push out mid on the way to help them. So close to my oboe. It's so unfortunate that I could only get the tier 2, but at least the tier 2 is buffed. It's a little bit better now than it once was. It actually has a little bit of scaling on it. I'm going to push this and then rotate. going to use my dash to get there. I have thorns up, but... Medusa dashed in. He's just going to shell, and it's going to be unfortunate because they have double anti-heal and he has double bombs, so... Why did the Willix just jump in? I don't know. This is where Vama this is why Vamana falls, like, isn't very uh, good in uh, SPL and isn't played all that often because once people just get double anti-heal and maybe even have curse tonk for you, it's so hard for you to do work because they can just kill you in your own. I'm just trying to clear the wave. They can never, like, chase me out and kill me, so... They also can just go upgraded shell for me, which sucks as well. Absorb my autos and my ult. But at least we have full oboe now. Once again, we gotta wait for our thorns up to be up to do anything. You are you are just kind of an ult bot late game. As Vamana. Ryzen just stashed over here. They, they are on fire. Try and get out of that. 
Yeah, that's too bad. I just get that. None of my team was here, so. I am able to slow both of them. They might be a little bit low. Maybe we can go in. Paul's just kind of in the air. I don't really want him to land. He'll just get insta killed, probably. Yeah, we should retreat. I'll attack the gold fury. I think this enemy team is in uh, comms together. Like, I think they're they're working together pretty well. So I think they're like a five man in comms, maybe, or maybe they're just randomly doing well together, which is possible as well. Who knows? I didn't grab that blue, but I don't really care. I have their blue. Willux isn't, unless you're like really good at a Willux and really know what you're doing, she's also not that good at diving, so I'm kind of just solo diving here, especially in these late game scenarios, and that's what's making it really hard. I mean, it already is hard to dive into double anti-heal and, uh, you know, people with upgraded shell, but it's especially harder when you're kind of just doing it alone. Guess we'll save up, uh, gold for a 3k pot, perhaps? Maybe if somebody else can cause an attraction, I can blink in on their backline and cause some havoc. We defend Phoenixes here. We should never defend our two twos. They have enhanced fire, and it's 35 minutes into a game. Those tier twos don't mean anything. Should be under our Phoenixes. We actually have decent defense. V and Kuzin can stall for a while. Disco's really good on Phoenix Phoenix uh, defense because she can just two people from range, one people from range. Apollo is pretty horrible, I would say. Gonna slow uh, them, slow their attack speed as well. So they can't go on Kuzin bow there. Keep poking. Apollo's in left, matching the Medusa, so that's good. They're actually pretty poked. I don't think this Kuzin bow ever needs to go in. So I'm gonna try and go in here. Oh my goodness, I got put in combat. At least my mantle saved me there. Proc my thorns as well. I can maybe go on Medusa. Nice, we were able to insta kill her because our thorns was off and she kind of one shot herself on. I still have blink up, so we can probably keep going. He still has Kepriol. Oh, I might just be dead here. Oh no, that's unfortunate, but he should be able to kill. Can they end? I think they might be able to end if they just group up and attack middle lane. Attack middle lane. Group up. Attack middle Phoenix. Attack that Titan. I think the Awoke should probably have stayed, but no, they can't end. If she's gonna back. She's gonna take too long to get there and Agni's up in twenty. Attack the middle Phoenix! Try to get out right away. Down. All right, they have minions now, so they should be able to get that. Doing a good job of keeping away. Get that and get out. Retreat. That's all. Agni bombs down. Nice. And she was awake, says Bria. <laughs> Okay, that's good. Well, we got their Phoenix now, and our Phoenix is back up, so that's obviously nice. I'm gonna not get a 500 pot because I'm so close to 3k pot. I'm just gonna wait. I am getting absolutely shredded by this Medusa. And my Frostbound isn't even doing that much for her because it's hard for me to get an auto attack on her to slow her freaking attack speed. It would help. I am taking the red, and I probably shouldn't be, but. I'm about to have a 3k pot, so maybe I should be. I don't really know the timer on fire. I should have gotten a timer on it. Just add five minutes to whenever they do it, but... We have our 3k pot now. I'm going to sell the ward so I don't have to pop it right away. I don't want to waste much time on it. Could maybe replace some items in my build, change some stuff, but I think all in all, it's just... It's it's a good build. The problem is that I'm just the mana at this stage when they kind of know what they're doing as far as like anti-heal and playing around me. And I don't have... Like a dedicated diver with me. Fire, 
I'm gonna pop that because we might be actually fighting soon. I kind of just want to look for a fight. We got Apollo in base though. Wait, we need Apollo. On my way. Why is he ulting? Why did he ult? Nice, we got the insta kill there. Now we're just gonna go on Agni. They shelled him. He's one HP. Raijin dashed in. Did they not Kepri? Oh, they did Kepri ult him. I thought he got revived though. I should be able to kill this guy. I do a lot of damage. I don't want to spread out from that guy. We'll probably kill these guys. Kepri no ult. I'm just gonna slow him forever. Nice. We might be able to end here. They have double mi- I don't know. This might be a throw call. We have minions coming. Oh, Rackney's in left. I'm gonna tank the Titan out a little bit. Oh my god, I'm winning HP. Retreat, retreat. Can't believe that any bomb hit me. <gasps> Good job by Apollo and Disco there. It was really greedy of me to dash like that. I think he saw me and turned around. Yeah, I was saying that was really sketchy to go for the end there, but... Oh, got a little bit ambitious. Maybe I can come back and put in some work. Don't have Actus for 40. Gotta keep that in mind. I have ult in 10, though. Oh, Kuzumbo is gonna maybe kill Raijin? If we play the corner on these guys... Can maybe catch this guy. Yeah, that's whatever. He's TPing in. It's actually troll that this Raijin has TP and beads and isn't just getting one shot. This guy just dash. This guy what? What? Retreat, bro. Just retreat. 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 He needs to return to base. Return to base. Okay. Well, my actors are back up. That was a good uh, initiation and fight for us. I will do a lot of damage to fire, but kind of want our Apollo and Obelix up to before we fight over here. I'm going to go ahead and ward this in the back and get another sentry. So we can have double sentry from me around fire. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like that call because he can get Oni Waves and that would be good for a push if we get fire. But also it will be good if we um, stall around fire and then like it pushes down mid or something. I just realized my camera is pointing to the side a little bit. This entire game. That's a little bit better. Be careful, right? Nice job. Group up. We have fire wave pressure in mid. Attack fire giant. Group up. And the sentry up here. There's the arachne. They're pushing mid right now. Ideally we'd be able to um, hit fire while they have to worry about the mid wave, but we weren't really around. This is where, in a casual with random people, it's very hard to um, coordinate around. And I'm just dead. Wow. That's kind of crazy. I was going to think about uh, Thornzing earlier, but kind of wasn't paying attention. I didn't realize that the <laughs> that Kepri was right next to me. That's probably game. Hate to see it. We just gotta defend the Titan here. They do have to worry about any waves though, so it's maybe not the end of the game. They're just gonna go to Fire Giant. If none of them back, then maybe the only wave in mid gets the mid Phoenix. Uh, they're probably gonna be done with Fire very soon because they have Arachne, Medusa. Yeah, Agni's there anyway. That was really bad by me to get picked like that. I, uh,. Need to get my ult off before Kepri pull. Kepri pull is very good for killing tanks. And this isn't really doing anything for me, so we're going to go ahead and sell that. I could go Nemean, but that's only going to block two autos, and this Agni's starting to rain down on me, literally. Uh, maybe I go Cad Shield. Gives me a little bit more damage, health, a little bit more tankiness, and it helps me with uh, the anti-heal that they have. I still have my 3k pop for 70 seconds, and my thorn's up in 30. Maybe we can get a fight right away. That would be really good. Like I said, my, I'm going to get one shot no matter what, so. 
unless I can get my blink I, unless I can blink on them and get my ult off and start the fight like right away. Okay. Gank. Gank left lane. If they're in left, then we should go on these guys. I don't have thorns, but I'm just gonna wait and try and chase these guys out. Ah, I got hit by another bomb, bro. This Raijin is really killing people? The problem is nobody's diving these guys with me. There's just like three people always just staring at me. Apollo's ulting in, so this actually might be pretty nice. Oh, he's 1 HP. Thorns did so much work to him. It's my Thorns down again, though, so... Okay. We saw that they did Pyromancer and there was a Raijin on that ward, so he wasn't even the one on Pyromancer, so that's why we engaged and left there and they ended up going pretty well for us. Guess I'll take this. Could even hit the Kuzumbo. I'm being very greedy at taking all the buffs. Well, we got two of them off of fire and we delayed their fire push for a while. That's good. Still getting one shot, as you guys can see. <laughs> With Famana, you kind of want to win the game by the mid-game. He's not really a hyper-carry late game. He's more of a hyper-carry when it comes to the mid-game and, like, being ahead because you can farm so well. Thorn's still down for 50. Gotta be a little bit careful. Blink's up in 10, though, so we maybe have to use our Blink and not have our Thorns for this next fight, which is definitely rough. This is the meta. Need blink thorns. Need them both. Just gonna keep trying to Kepri pull us to kill. He put me in combat with that Kepri too, which is really good. Oh, this Agni is getting way too aggressive. I was just trying to get out of combat there. I'm gonna wait to get out of combat. Oh, I wasn't able to block his dash, but... I still want to chase him out. Is anybody gonna help me with these guys? Hello? <laughs> They're helping me finally. They helped me and we win a fight. You gotta be a little bit careful here. Should be able to chase these guys out and win. Okay. Oh, it's just insane to me, man. Like, how are there just three- they're junglers, like, there's just three people staring at me the entire fight. I didn't have my thorns, so if I had my thorns, I'd kill everybody there. Oh, nice try. If she hit that, that Arachne was dead. I kind of entered there, because I kind of just walked up in the video, so, but I was trying to bait her so that we could play up and kill her, because if we killed her, we probably could have ended, maybe? It would have been close. Oh, what a game this is. This is crazy. It's a long one. This Berserkers isn't even really doing that much for me, to be honest, because even when, when I get low, I can't even play aggro, aggro. Can't even play aggressive. Cancel that. He says that he wants to go gold while we go FG, but it's really not even that worth. Just a green gold, and we want to actually fight around the FG if they see him there or do anything like that. I guess I'll go Nemean, so maybe I just don't get one shot. By the Medusa. It's only gonna give me two block stacks though, because I only have. Um, maybe it will give me three actually. Can't really. I'm not doing the math right now, you know. We got rid of Berserkers because screw it. it. Again, it really wasn't doing much for us. Oh, making a little bit of a movement. Hopefully the shoe stays on the head. Attack fire giant. Yeah. Attack fire giant. We should go pull fire right away. I'm gonna push the midway first. Medusa's gonna be coming over as well. I can maybe cut off her. I wanna just make it awkward for her. I don't have thorns for 10, so. I'm gonna come in behind it and make it really awkward for her. 
Mantle proc, baby. There's four people on me. Hello. Four people. They're all really low. And they're just sitting here hitting the Kepri. Okay, I usually don't talk to my teammates, but if we, there is another fight, I'm just going to try and tell the Zolix what to do. Ooh, they almost killed. I don't think there's going to be another fight, though, unfortunately. Oh, nice job, Priya. That's probably game, though. Yeah, it's game. Unfortunate. Hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's just uh, get to the late game. I, I can't solo dive against them. It kind of just sums it up. They have the anti-heal for me. If they know what they're doing and kind of coordinate and just hit me all at the same time, then it's hard for me to do anything. I definitely made some bad plays as well, though, because I had some uh, plays where they picked me pretty early in the fight. But it, all, it also went downhill in that one mid fight. We all fought in mid, and there was a... Uh, it was gonna go really well. I was like three levels ahead at that point and then kind of just went went pretty poorly. I didn't play it perfectly and that was that. They have 56k damage though, which is top damage in the whole game by a good amount. Yeah, it looks didn't do a whole lot of damage, which makes sense because I, I don't think she, maybe she's new to jungle or whatever. She did sw switch roles with me, so um, did appreciate that. But uh, yeah, she just needed to help me dive is a little bit better. But it's kind of hard to on a look, so I get it. But yeah, that's uh, that's the gameplay. A little 50-minute gameplay in the entire time the shoe was on my head. It never fell off. Can you believe that? It's not duct tape or anything. Look, I literally just take it off. Boom, it's off. And I put it upside down so that the bottom of it didn't sit on my head because the bottom of a shoe is probably very, very dirty. And by probably, I mean it definitely is. So yeah, that's the gameplay with the shoe on it. I'll put it back on my head so we can end this gameplay and do the outro. I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. Let me know what you want to see next. 50, 56k damage on a gameplay, not too shabby, and it was a long one. Try to go over everything and tell you guys what to do exactly and explain everything. So yeah, stay safe, stay healthy as always, and say goodbye to the shoe. Bye, guys.